Okay, I have four hours till my kids off school, so I am going to collect some tools and some parts. I'm gonna head to the beach and try to make a guitar on the beach in the next four hours. Well, I'm at least an hour behind schedule, so I will probably have about three hours to find the wood and <laughs> make it into a guitar. Maybe I'll just make a lap steel. That'll be a lot easier, except for I did bring a fretted fretboard. Anyway, let's see what happens. Okay, hello and welcome. Here we are on the beach in Victoria, BC, Canada, and today there are the perfect number of people here. Just me and my little pal Buggy, and we're looking for the perfect piece of wood that we can convert into a guitar or a lap steel. There's a lot of wood here, but finding the perfect piece is kind of difficult. Here, oh, here's a nice trapezoid with rust and graffiti. The last time I wanted to build a guitar on the beach, it took me about six weeks of looking before I found this assemblage of lumber. So finding one in a few minutes was very fortunate. The ocean was also kind enough to provide me with this workbench. Pretty epic. Now the trapezoidal shape of this driftwood kind of reminds me of a lap steel I used to have made by Nioma, which was a music distribution company out of Seattle and Los Angeles. I believe they probably had their electric lap steels made by Dobro Corp, who was in LA at the time, or possibly even Magnetone, who had this cool headless trapezoidal lap steel known as the Melodier, or Melodier if you're French. Speaking of headless, I need to cut off some of the head of this lap steel so that the tuning heads will protrude out the other side. And there are a couple nails in the way. This one came out easy, thank you, thank you, but the second one doesn't want to move. Oh well, I'll just have to be careful as I saw. Did I mention the workbench also came with a built-in vise? How cool is that? Check it out. It actually isn't that great, but it's helpful. Um, you're probably noticing the cheap handsaw I'm using, even though I packed a fancy Japanese saw at the beginning of the video, but it didn't really fit comfortably in my backpack, and I've got this saw sitting in the trunk of my car for emergencies such as driftwood guitars. is taking so long I think I may have to make this into a dull saw ASMR channel. Subscribe below if that's your thing. Oh, Buggy got sawdust in his eye. Poor baby. What's that old saying about flying too close to the sun? Ooh, look at what a great job I did. Such a straight line, perfect depth. I did end up going back and correcting the angle I was sawing, and cross cutting is going a lot smoother, but my favorite tool of all is known as brute force. Doink! Now observe as the master luthier scribes a perfectly straight line. <laughs> I'm using a very expensive French knife, but I believe in the United States you call these freedom knives? Let me know in the comments. I didn't actually end up even looking at the scribe marks, so it was kind of negligible in the end. What a terrible job I did. Now, little known fact, the standard technique for sawing requires that you look like you're taking a difficult poop the entire time. but somehow I squoze by. Is squoze a word? Okay, I 
set out to make a guitar, but I think I may have just made a giant thumb drive. Hilarious. Layout time. 33 millimeters. Okay, these lines actually have to be straight, so I'm trying a little harder. Turns out using the back of the Openel, Aspinel, the hell are these knives called? Using the back is better for scribing this soft, flat sawn driftwood, apparently. Nice. Now I easily could have brought an electric drill down here, but that would have killed the vibes. And to be honest, this egg beater drill only took about 12 seconds per hole. And what's the old saying? Haste makes waste. Anyway, speaking of haste, let's speed this up. Is there a word for when you see dust on a screen and you can't help but blow at the screen? Uh-oh. That's not straight, nor is it thin enough, so we're going to have to bust out one of my favorite tools, my Shinto Rasp, and even this all out. What do you think, Buggy? <laughs> Buggy just wants food, but... I appreciate his input anyway. I got these rusty flathead screws. I think they actually came out of a different lap steel that had them hidden underneath the pearl dots. That was quite the surprise when I was trying to remove the fretboard. It was a national Waikiki from the early 40s. Picking a tailpiece, I chose the one that doesn't hang off the bottom. Pretty easy decision. Flathead screws may be impractical, but I find them very attractive, especially a dome top brass flathead. My favorite screw. Okay, we got to find a nut Hello? Anywhere? You? Sure. Buggy's still staring at my pocket because there's treats in there. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, just need to find a bridge. It's pretty hard. That's what she said. <laughs> Uh-oh. See the problem? Too much break angle over that nut. I should have put the headstock on the other side, thinned it on the back. So when I turn the tuning machines, the string just flops off the top every time. So it's essentially dead in the water. I'm only about an hour, 45 minutes in at this point, but this is my first meal of the day. And I don't really feel like doing this anymore. So, I'm gonna give it some time and have a snack. shots in the tide line before shoving it out to sea as the failure it is. JK, here it is, hiding its face in shame at home on the CP80. I picked up my daughter from school, we packed up some snacks, and we headed back to the beach for dinner time on our picnic bench slash work bench. Let me know in the comments what your favorite screw head is. Rusty flat heads are amazing, but I think my true favorite is probably Frankenstein. 
Okay, let's get pedantic. Yes, I know those are bolts in the side of his head, not screws. And yes, I know that's Frankenstein's monster. Not Frankenstein. Speaking of screws, I actually brought screws for the tuning machines this time, but I had to use Phillips head. I am ashamed, but I feel like I had to be honest with you. Here in Canada, the Robertson screw is king, uh, whereas the Phillips is obviously the dominant screw head in the United States. I've heard tell, but never researched myself, that this had to do with Henry Ford giving a contract to Phillips instead of Robertson, and their fates were sealed from there. I don't know. Robertson is a superior screw head to Phillips. Um, Torx is also good, but nothing beats a flathead. R.I.P. Phil Hartman. Phillips looks better than Robertson, I'll give it that. In case it's not abundantly obvious, I took all the parts off the one side of this board and I'm flipping them to the other side. Here my daughter's doing a little videography work as the tide gets closer and closer. I've been told it's not child labor if you don't pay them. So, big thanks to loopholes. You're the best. I ended up cutting this piece in half and using it for the nut and the bridge. Now they match. <laughs> know why I don't like to go on a teeter-totter with my daughter? She doesn't hold up her end. And there you have it. A beautiful lap steel made right there on the beach. end the movie like that. Yeah. Let's do the Scooby Doo end. Good call. Here I am back in the workshop. Here is the lap steel. Um, but as you may be able to tell, this isn't much of an acoustic instrument. Have we figured out what that says yet? Because I haven't. Um, so obviously we're gonna have to put a pickup on it. Let's do it. Now, hopefully you're watching this on a pretty small screen because on a big screen, boy oh boy is that a face full of crotch. I figured I'd use this old Japanese foil pickup. Instead of gold foil, it's got this black vinyl, so it's worth 20 bucks instead of 150. My daughter says this looks like sushi nori. 
I think it's gonna look a little better flipped over like this. It's kind of like a rusty tweed situation. Very nice. Also, the backing plate's gonna have to go because I want a little more clearance for the strings. I have these old D-Armand control panels from sliding pickups, and I played around with it. I put it in a few places on the steel, but I really didn't like it. So I'm gonna go simple and go straight to jack. Listen to the sound difference when I put it down on my workbench here. Listen. I guess more is more. The workbench in this case is red oak, about two inches thick. When you're gonna drill an angle in a piece of wood, it's a really good idea to have a pilot hole first and then angle your bit once you get it established in the wood. The tripod I was using for that incredible cinematic effect on that shot was uh, this driftwood Bible I found on the beach. It's not really a Bible, but I'm making it into one. That'll be a uh, another YouTube video in the future. Like and subscribe. Ooh, here you can see the tailpiece bottom screw is pulling out. There's one way to solve that. They don't teach you this in the uh, Roberto Venn School of Luthery. Nor do they teach you this sweet skill. Mm -hmm. This is called relicking. And this is called relicking one's thumb. That was really idiotic. Another reason that was absolutely idiotic, I'm fine by the way, um, is that sitting right next to the guitar, I have this jig that I use for drilling holes for electro socket jacks. And I am going to use it now. I love working on a project where you don't really have to be that careful and you can screw a jig directly to the guitar and it doesn't really matter. Usually I work on projects that take months, sometimes years. Here's a base I recently made. It's hollow body under five pounds and nearly five feet long. I'll probably show some builds in the future, but I haven't really documented any of my previous builds thoroughly enough to make a video. Got my whole board out, my attractive uh, relicking, and I'm going to use an electro socket jack. It just fits in that hole. That's what she said. And so to buy myself a little extra space, I'm actually going to use this old brass drawer pull. Uh, escutcheon and screw it right on there. What do you think this is called? Is it an escutcheon? Is it a ferrule? Is it a washer? Let me know. I'm gonna use it as a jack plate. Let's see if I'm any good as a stripper. Mmm, a bit awkward to be honest. Just like Bill Clinton, I will not be inhaling. This is vintage lead-laden solder. I don't swear by it, but I have it. We are ready for electrification. Pilot holes are almost always an incredible idea. Dropping your lap steel off the table, also a great idea.
see anything missing from this circuit? The number of times I have left out this one detail is kind of absurd at this point. Hear that lovely buzz? The only thing more embarrassing than using Phillips head screws is forgetting a ground wire yet again. And I am going to take one of the laziest possible routes, and that route takes me directly through the bridge. I soldered a ground wire to the ground of the pickup, and I wedged it under the tailpiece. The wire, by the way, is from a radio from 1918. Bye. 